Okay, class. From this video, we are going to study the therapeutics on specific disease. The study in this session is very similar to the previous ones. Until today, you should already realize that the study of acupuncture we emphasize memorizing. You need to have a very clear understanding and very clear definition in your mind of the specific terms that we are talking about. For example, in the previous, previous study, we talk about the qi and blood. In the test, I will ask you, what's qi? What's blood? What's axioms? Or what's dampness in the diagnostics? So in this session, you need to memorize what's the definition, the, the definitions of specific diseases. For instance, in this video, we are going to study the myofascial pain syndrome and the B pain syndrome. So the first thing you need to memorize, what's myofascial pain syndrome? What's the definition? You need to memorize the definition. What's B pain syndrome? What are, what, what are the possible causes of these syndrome? or the these diseases the, from the etiology what are the management of these diseases when you see this kind of patient how do you treat this patient so these are something you're going to focus on each disease or most of the diseases at the beginning we will have a brief background or introduce a little bit of the prevalence those is not that important in your in your test, but that's also important for you to understand better for the diseases. You will have a general idea what the prevalence it is. Different kinds of pain, including muscular pain, pain in the joints, these pains are quite common in clinical practice, especially in acupuncture practice. In this video, we are going to introduce a few diseases or syndromes. The first one, myofascial pain syndrome. This term is actually from conventional medicine. In conventional medicine, they also use, they also diagnose as myofascial pain syndrome. In conventional medicine, when you see a title or disease name, named after syndrome, most of the condition, it refers to the cause, the actual cause of this disease is still unclear. So it is different from the actual term such as hypertension or diabetes. If they use syndrome, it refers to the cause that is still unclear. So from the definition, my facial pain syndrome, firstly, it must be chronic. If this patient twists, got sprained or twisted their ankle or other joints for one day or for half day, you cannot diagnose this patient as my facial pain syndrome because the my facial pain syndrome must be a chronic muscular pain. So the pain is in the muscle. The patient may present as the you may find trigger points on the patient. The surgery happens after repeated injury. After injury, sensitive areas of tight, tight muscle, sensitive areas of tight muscle fibers can found in the muscles. So you, in this situation, you will find a knot, a tender muscle, muscle knot. The patient may present as persistent, persistent pain. So in order to understand the definition, what's a trigger point? A trigger point is a sensitive spot per patient, a knot. The patient feel more sensitive on the spot. It can be pain or other sensation, hypersensitive, sensitive. Everyone, at some point in their lives, 
has experienced acute muscle pain associated with the muscle sparum or repetitive strain. Myofascial pain syndrome is also very prevalent in our daily practice, especially in acupuncture practice, because we actually see a lot of patients present as different kinds of pain. 29.6% of the patient present as bit pain. Almost 30% of the patient is myofascial pain syndrome. Chronic head and neck pain, more than half of them have been diagnosed as myofascial pain syndrome. 85% of the back pain can be diagnosed as myofascial pain syndrome. Although in the clinical practice, we can see patients that are presenting with the trigger points. The causes of the trigger points still unclear in medical science. So in clinic, the patient may present as some painful error or more sensitive errors from the, the experience. But from the practitioner's point of view, we can palpate some knots or tightness, especially the knots. Or some taut band, we also can palpate. These patients sometimes may feel more sensitive. These are considered as the trigger points. The potential mechanism, these are hypotheses. These, so the patient may or may not present the, the actual cause, the, the actual causes may or may not be these causes. It's just, just some hypotheses for further, further research. Many different factors may relate to the pain. Some may relieve or some may make it worse. It will depend on, on individuals. And most patients will present as or will have a history of over, overusing the muscles, especially the, the tiredness. So the over, overusing the muscles doesn't have to be the physical over, of overuse. For instance, for instance, when we said overuse, if the patient sits there, they work in the office, they sit for too long, this kind of sitting also considered as overuse especially sitting and work in front of a computer or sitting while reading books. The posture from the, the, the body and the head, the ankle there for the head. If the head is forward, the back is straight. The muscle in this region from the neck and the upper back are always tense. So if the patient keep in this position for too long, this even this patient is sitting and or resting or reading or playing with cell phones is also considered as overuse. So from this point of view, to relieve the pain, except from the treatments, we also need to advise the patient from the lifestyle, do not sit too long, do not keep one posture for too long. These are some common symptoms that may present with myofascial pain syndrome. The patient may or may not present these symptoms. So the patient doesn't have to present with all these symptoms. When we diagnose the patient with myofascial pain syndrome, the golden standard for diagnosis, we have to find the trigger points. So if you can find the trigger points and you can exclude other possible causes, other possible diseases, then you can diagnose this, the patient presents with myofascial pain syndrome. You also need to differentiate with fibromyalgia with myofascial pain syndrome. Myofascial pain syndrome mostly is localized and regional pain. So in local area, in one site, fibromyalgia can present in multiple sites. And also, the multiple sites, these are related to muscles. This is not joint facial pain, acute onset. The management of the myofascial pain syndrome, is the, the main purpose is to relieve the pain. So you can, re you can relieve pain, the pain from the lifestyle to advise the patient. You have a better posture, 
do not overuse the muscles. So that's very important to, to prevent or to maintain once the pain has been relieved. It is very important to change the lifestyle to maintain the, the healthy state, uh, status. The treatments can be the, the most common ones, medication from the conventional medicine point of view, trigger points injections. This is very important, the trigger point injections. Uh, obviously, we study acupuncture, we're not going to ingest the, the medicine or the drugs from conventional, conventional medicine. However, in acupuncture, we do have acute injection, but acute injection is not permitted in South Africa, so we also don't do injections from acupuncture. The physical therapy, physio, physical therapy, the medication you can they can use, pain reliever, antidepressant, and sedatives. These we just use as an introduction at the background of the myofascial pain syndrome. As an acupuncturist, we don't really use these. So these, if you, if you want to use this, or if you think these are better for the patient, you need to refer them to the general practice, the GP. So we, we are not going to prescribe any of these with the therapy. So our focus will be on acupuncture. So as you can see here, we use a very short time to give you a general background of myofascial pain syndrome. Because the myofascial pain syndrome is very common, you know, to, to understand the modern diagnosis or the conventional medicine diagnosis, you have to know the, this term. Also, you need to know the, the common management from them. But we will focus on acupuncture. When we talk about acupuncture, the term myofascial pain syndrome is not that important for, for us. And also, as you can see from the treatments, the introduction here, the trigger points, the one of the most important signs that's to diagnose myofascial pain syndrome. The treatments, trigger point injections. When you see the descriptions of trigger points, is there anything remind you in, ac in acupuncture that's or acupoints that are very similar to the trigger points? Actually, when you see the definition of the trigger points, the sensitive parts or the tender, the knot, that's ashi points in acupuncture. Ashi. So when we study the acupoints, it says ouch. Ouch, yes. Ah, yes. So ashi points. As you can see from here, the treatments from the trigger point injection, when we study acupuncture, Asher points is not the, the only choice for, uh, from, for us. We have many other choices to deal with this kind of situation. So we're going to focus on acupuncture, but when we study acupuncture, we don't really use this term. Although you can explain with the, the patient, my facial pain syndrome, but when you select the points, my facial pain syndrome, this diagnosis doesn't help you at, at all. As you can see, the background introduction, we don't mention anything from Chinese medicine theory. If there's nothing from Chinese medicine theory, you won't be able to analyze from the theory. So next slide, we're going to discuss the B pain syndrome and the low back pain. We're going to put these in one category. Why we introduce the myofascial pain syndrome together with the B pain syndrome or low back pain, because these are very close related, even with the fibromyalgia. These are very close related to B pain syndrome. Firstly, what's a B pain syndrome? So BI pronounced as B, so exactly the same as B. B. The fourth term, B pain syndrome. In Mandarin, we call it B syndrome. So this is the this is the direct translation. Pain just in English from this syndrome, 
from the tone, it tells, it tells you that this syndrome the patient may present pain, different kinds of pain. So we still use B pain syndrome. What does it mean by the B? It described in Huang Di Nei Jing. That's the combination of the pathogenic wind, coldness, and dampness will result in B. So the blockage from wind, coldness, and dampness is B. The blockage or the combination from these pathogenic factors will cause blockage. So the B pen syndrome, when we say blockage, you will you, you may reflect directly the treatments, the treatment principles try to relieve alleviate these pathogenesis. B pen syndrome refers to objections of qi and blood. Why the patient will present as pain? The blockage, the objection of qi and blood, where in the meridians and collaterals, what are the causes? Pathogenic wind, coldness and dampness, and heat. What are the symptoms or the presentations? Soreness and pain, dissimilar. Numbness, heavy sensation. It can be in joints or muscles. The patient may or may not present as with limitation of movements. So this is the definition of B pain syndrome. From this definition, you will understand the causes, the possible causes, pathogenesis or the mechanism of the disease, objection of qi and blood. The causes, wind coldness, wind coldness, dampness and heat, presentations and location. So this, that, that, that's why we, that's why at the beginning of this video, I emphasize the definition. You need to memorize the, the definition. Once, once you memorize the definition, you will have all these informations, the possible causes, the mechanism of pathogenesis, the presentations of the, of this kind of disease. On the energy, describe the, the causes of E syndrome. So when you see the combination of, of pathogenic wind, coldness and dampness, may result in B syndrome. So you, in treatments, we can relieve the wind, relieve the coldness, or relieve the dampness. Depends on the depends on individuals. Huang Di Nei Jin further divided the B pen syndrome into different categories, and they have different titles. Wonder, wonder B, moving around presents if the pathogenic wind prevails. A painful B. So as you can see, these different titles in English they already gave you the direct indications. The wandering means something moving. The pain, the painful B, means the, the main presentation of this symptom. Uh, the main presentation of this this syndrome is pain. So the patient presents a severe pain. The fixed B, we emphasize that the the pain is not moving. Compared with the wandering. In Shanghai Zha Bin Lun, Dr. Zhang Zhongjin, it describes different kinds of B syndrome. It calls damp B, blood B, disease of every joint. So it describes in this book the damp B, it emphasizes the cause, the cause of this B syndrome is dampness. The blood B, the pain is due to the blood blood stasis. When you say blood stasis from the diagnosis and the basic theory, when you say the B, the blood stasis, we may have the assumption that the patient may present as blood stasis, blood stasis such as purple tongue, purple lips, or ladies, they may present as the then the maturation may present as dark red color with the clots. And when we set the blood stasis, the pain will be fixed error. It can be stabbing pain. So these are the blood B. In the treatments, we're going to activate the blood, the blood circulation. Dr. Zhang Zhongjin, 
He also described the disease of every joint. This is very similar to arthritis, different kinds of arthritis today. When talking about the treatment principles, although you diagnose this patient with wind and blood and blood, how to treat the wind? E zong bi du. E zong bi du. E is the medicine. Zong means the ancestor of the, the medicine. B means must read. From the title of this book, the author emphasized that the all doctors must read this book. He described that we need to focus on the blood if the patient presents with pathogenic wind. As the pathogenic wind will disappear if the blood circulation has improved. This is another principle in Chinese medicine. If the blood the circulation, if the blood circulation has improved, the pathogenic wind can be relieved. When you see this clause, sometimes you will confuse why. What's the relationship between the wind and the blood circulation? So if you confuse, you may refer back to the basic theory the five internal evils, the internal wind. What are the possible causes of the internal wind? And also, the, the blood circulation. Why is the blood circulation? The other one is the volume of the blood. Why, if you improve the volume of the blood, you can eliminate the wind? So now I want you to imagine that in, in a meridian or in a channel, just let's use a channel as an example, if it, it is emptied in the channel, what's there? What's in the channel? If it is emptied in the channel, so we, the channel we call the meridian or the collaterals now, if it is emptied or it's only a few blood there, what's the other parts of the channel? You'll be the air, so just in it then in nature, this part will be the, the air, right? So the, the air is the wind, the pathogenic wind. So from this clause, what we need to do, we need to activate the blood circulation. We need to nourish the blood. We need to increase the volume of the blood. If you increase the volume of the blood, the blood will occupy the, the whole area, so there will be no wind. So from this point of view, we said, to treat the, the pathogenic wind, you need to treat the blood. You need to tonify the blood. You need to activate the blood circulation. The B syndrome refers to different types of medical conditions. If a patient presents as different type of arthritis, then you can refer to the treatments of B syndrome, even the myofascial pain syndrome that we discussed just now. Any inflammations related to the muscles and bones out. So you can refer to B syndrome. These are some examples of arthritis the inflammation of the joints. In a severe condition, the shape of the fingers may change. In a mild condition or in the early stage, the patient may present it as pain or redness. Sometimes swollen, stiffness. So these are the common symptoms of arthritis. In this video, we mainly focus on the introduction of myofascial pain syndrome as well as the definition of B pain syndrome. In the next video, we are going to continue the discussion on B pain syndrome. Thank you for your attention.